And uh, my question has to do with affirmative action, and I mentioned several times earlier. Um, in the history of the United States, as we all know, um, Civil War ended in 1865, and um, a lot of people think that you know slavery ended back then, but there was um, another form that was is called indentured servitude that lasted until you know around the early 1900s, and so th this form sort of continued, and then um, we, we got the Civil Rights Movement in 1965. And so uh, my question is, you know, given the history, there, there are you know, injustices done on people of color, and um, if, do you think that they deserve some sort of, you know, reconciliation? And if so, if not with affirmative, affirmative action, what form? And if affirmative action is the answer, um, which, according to your answer earlier, not, not exactly what, what you agree with, but uh, for, for what um, length, right? How, how long should it last? No, that's my question. No, like no reconciliation, no reparations. We've already overly prioritized in society. I'll prove it to you. There, there is institutional black privilege in society today. And no one wants to say it out loud. Blacks can get into college with lower test scores. They get more acting contracts. They're literally in every other television commercial, right? They're allowed to literally, if a white person says a certain word, you could be completely terminated from public life, right? And so we spent trillions of dollars post-Great Society, post the Civil Rights Act paired with the Great Society. Did any of that help? No, actually, blacks got poorer on average. And so before the Great Society, 75% of blacks growing up in America had, two, had a, a father and a mother in the home. Now that number is anywhere between 20 to 25%. So America got significantly less racist. We spent trillions of dollars in our urban corridor. We implemented affirmative action in our government hiring practices, in our corporate hiring practices, in our college admissions. And yet, blacks on average are poorer than they were in proportion to the 1960s. What changed? And the answer is that we are not confident, we're not honestly cour courageous enough to empower black voices to say, hey, you have to fix the problem in your own communities. It's not about white guilt or white pandering. It's about how about you stay with the woman you impregnate? How about you stop embracing gangster rap culture? How about you stop listening to music that glorifies the worst part of society? And people are afraid to say this. And Thomas Sowell wrote an entire book about it. And the affirmative action creates race resentment is what ends up happening. And while I acknowledge that, yes, of course there were laws that were unjust in the past, We've already lived under the biggest reparations program in the history of modern society, and it's been an abysmal failure. You want to know what true liberation would look like? Black America taking responsibility for their actions and doing the three to four things that are necessary to succeed in America. Getting married before you have kids, graduating from high school, get a job, any job, and not committing crimes. This is what drives me nuts about the looting stuff, is that people say, well, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, it's a matter of survival. How about you stop acting like a criminal? How about you stop stealing stuff and we justify it? And the more that we do that, the more we are building a baseline of an acceptance. And here's the thing, just so we're clear. Blacks make up about 12% of the American population. More specifically, black men, 6% of the American population. They're responsible for 60% of the murders. That's a thought crime. You have 6% of the American population doing 60% of the murdering. And yet white people are the problem? No. It's black privilege, and I'm, the, I'm not afraid to talk about it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome back to Breakdown Friday. Joseph Ward, Professor Carl Tone Jones, Patrick Irvin. We are here breaking down this clip from Charlie Kirk, basically <laughs> telling black people that we need to take responsibility for what has happened to us in America because it's our fault. Everything that has happened to us is our fault because America rolled out the red carpet to help fix the wrongs that they have done to us. And we just haven't seen it. Charlie mm -hmm. Kurt seen it, but we haven't seen it. And, you know, we're doing a horrible job of taking responsibility and making sure that we take care of our lives and put condoms on and stuff. So we're going to get into this. We're going to break this down because we got a lot to say about this. We got a whole hell of a lot to say about this, uh, Mr. Charlie. So it's funny his name, Charlie Kirk, Mr. Charlie. <laughs> so uh, 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 Pat, 
you already mm -hmm. own one, man. So look on ahead start with you, man. What are your what are your thoughts on what Charlie Kirk was saying about basically, you know, black privilege and black people needing to take responsibility for what has happened to us in America? Mm. This is one that I yeah, wish I would have watched. I wish I would have watched it earlier. I wish I was privileged enough to watch this earlier. Cause uh <laughs> Black privilege. <laughs> that man said a whole lot. Now, let's start with what I agree with. There's actually something he said that I agree with. It's, yeah, it's a couple things. Yeah. Uh, one of the most prominent ones that he said that I agree with is that black people need to take responsibility for our situation, our current mm -hmm. situation. I agree with that. We do. We need we to take do. responsibility. For our current situation. Now, I disagree with his reasonings. I think we need to take responsibility for it because it's the people that <laughs> created the situation that we're currently in are not going to take responsibility for what they did. So two people can't just sit back and not take responsibility for the negative situation if you want it to get better. Even if the victim has to take ownership of the problem to start changing it, that's what has to happen. In the black community, we're in a fucked up space. And in order for it to change, somebody got to take responsibility. White people ain't going to do it. So by default, it's on us. It's on us. The rest of that bullshit <laughs> <laughs> it was like, talking at the both sides of his neck, man. Look, man, first off, unemployment rates for black is like 6%. Okay? Let's start there. It's 6%. Using the number that he used, I'm sure it's the number that he used because he didn't bother to elaborate on what he meant by unemployment. And when they don't bother to elaborate, they try to get themselves some wiggle room to 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 uh reframe the conversation and hey, throw shit. out six percent so it's six percent so we are getting jobs sir uh numerically speaking there are more white people in poverty than black people only about 25 percent of the black community which is large but only about 25 percent of the black community are actually living in poverty sir mm -hmm. so it ain't that we all broke um high school graduation rates blacks graduate from high school at 80 percent so it's not that we're not dropping, not graduating high school. Like literally half the things you said do are being done and have been being done. But you're not going to address the issue. And the, I don't even think he knows what privilege is. Is that nah, fair? He don't. Yeah, that he, fair? Don't. he don't. Because, you know, because you, you see how he went on to try to explain what our privilege was. Uh, right. I don't do that, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think they played dumb. <laughs> so, so for the people that ain't as smart as he is, because I do think you have to be a certain kind of smart to make up such a creatively, deceptively stupid argument. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, privilege is the benefits that you get from society wow. and from uh, other wow. people's in power for being a member of their group yep. or being a member of a group that is supported by them. So even when he said we've given the, he, he may mention the blacks getting government jobs. I ain't never heard of nobody getting rich from a government job. I, I mean, have you ever heard of anybody becoming even a hundred thousand there from a government like, from starting at the bottom of the government and working there, what is he talking about? Yeah, because he did he did frame that as if black people getting high level government jobs. Right, like black people get jobs in the government, sure, and the people that are the secretaries and department heads and bureau chiefs, those are overwhelmingly white people that mm -hmm. overwhelmingly did not work <laughs> their way up through the government system. They got hired into that position. So like all of the things, how about you uh, not, uh, how about you marry the woman you have sex with? Well, we were doing that. And then, so it becomes disingenuous for you to say. Because <laughs> hmm. hey, no. he asked the question, well, why did it change? Well, why did it change? Because you never answered that. Right. No, it didn't change. It, to, first, the, the stupidity of saying it changed because they got better economic options. That's just pure foolishness. Is that what you're saying, sir? 
I got to believe that your parents did not allow something as stupid as that to be raised in their house. So I'm not accepting them. Uh, but then we, we go on. So he's talking about and what he say. Uh, what, what, what <laughs> he said so much dumb shit. Yeah. What changed? He's talking about how about you stop glorifying and celebrating music that, oh, sir, do you know that the vast majority of that negative music is supported by your people, your children? I'm just saying. It ain't been a black artist go platinum purely off a of black fan base in the last 50, 60 years, if ever. Okay? Hip hop is thriving because white people are purchasing it. It's not. So even to that, gang violence is less than 1% of the black population. What, what, what are we. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let Go ahead. Yeah. PC. Yeah. 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 PC, go ahead. Go ahead and pick that on up, man. Because what you thought about the clip, like the stuff he's saying, because he it, it's. When I saw this, I was like, yeah. I, I did the Birdman hand rub when I saw this. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and now I remember what I was talking about prior to when I said I need to find yeah. um, I, I need to look for something and because Pat just touched on it. The music. The T.I. interview and Double XL in 2017 when T.I. talked about wanting, going to the record execs and wanting to put together uh, family-based music because he was no longer living the life of a criminal, a thug. He didn't want to rap about the streets no more. And the execs, I'm trying to find the name of the company because I'm actually looking at the article right now. Um, but the execs for the company, I want to say Atlantic. I want to say Atlantic. Yeah, but he might was not on Atlantic. No, nah, he was on Atlantic. Okay, so he said the execs at Atlantic told him that they're not going to support any family-friendly music, that he needs to get out there and rap about hoes, rap about the streets, and rap about guns and drugs. Several, and several we, rappers have said that. Yeah, I mean, um, and we know that uh, the whole push for the, the movement towards gangster rap. Can you send me that? Our, Can you yeah. drop that link for that in the, in the group chat? It will do. Um so, um, one of the things that, see, y'all, we were work in progress, y'all. We working while we working. Um, That's gonna and be while we working, work. make sure y'all start hitting that super chat, man. Y'all got me hit that like button. In it. Yes, please. Hit that like button. Hit that super chat, please. Support. Like support. button, super chat. I'm going to fix up my background a little bit over here while we talk. <laughs> the Independence Day Project. So, I'm not standing for this. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, yo, man, what a time to be white, man. It must be freaking horrible, you know, to be white. With all this America. institutional black privilege we have. Bro, you, I mean, you would have thought we had a black president. Um, <laughs> mm. Mm. And a blue Lambo. <laughs> right. You would have thought that. You know, the wild part about all this is, um, you know, uh, where do we start with this? Because this dude gave us, like, I, I, I did watch this, like, really, like, really right before we got on. So I was already supercharged. I took a nap. I'm ready. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> if black people, literally, this is the black people pull yourselves up by your bootstraps argument. Mm -hmm. So, let me go back to the trusty device, you know, um, and let's talk about when black people did. So, when black people decided to institute the township and build it prior to the end of slavery, and Portsmouth, Ohio, it was raided by, you know, white um, lynch mobs and the black people who actually survived the race mob, the, the race riot, not race riot, but the race massacre, they had to flee the town. Then we go to um, Wincoats, what is it, Wind uh, what is it? I can't remember, Wyandotte, um, Michigan, right? And they talked about a 70-year-old purge of black people from this particular township on multiple occasions. We're talking about Pollock, Louisiana, 1873. Same thing. Selena, Ten Tennessee, um, 1878. Same thing. Comanche County, Texas, 1886. 
Same thing. And all these men, all these, most of these townships, by the way, were, the, were, were under siege. Now, these are the ones that were under siege based on the accusations of a white, of a black man assaulting a white woman. Keep that in mind as we continue this because this has been a consistent pattern of behavior when it comes to things, um, i.e. Bill Cosby, so forth. Now, I don't, I'm not defending the man, but I'm just saying this, the pattern is still the same. Accusations without any proof. Okay, so then we have um, Paragon, uh, Paragould, Arkansas, from several, which was raided several times, several race riots between 1888 and 1908. All right, Lexington, Oklahoma, 1892. All right, Blackwell, Oklahoma, and and, and this is the show because the, we always talk about Tulsa. There were over 57 black settlements in Oklahoma alone after the after Reconstruction. All right. Uh, let me see. Monet, Missouri, uh, June 20th, 1894. All right. Black man lynched whole town. Black town expelled. Black man is accused of killing the white man during a fight. So, a fist fight. Somebody got the ass whooped, didn't survive. Next thing you know, repercussions for the community. I can go on. Linton, Indiana. Uh, Linton, Indiana, 1896, Elmwood, uh, Indiana, 1897, and we all know about um, Wilmington, North Carolina, the Wilmington riots, and um, which is the only time supposedly in American history prior to 2021 where you had armed um, white folk running up into a state assembly, and effectively pulling a coup d'etat, removing black elected officials from their particular seats of power and their positions in that state. Have so we can, we can go on. Um, Pan Illinois, 1899. Um, Carterville, Illinois, 1899. And we didn't even get to the bloody summer of 1917. It was the uh, bloody summer of 1919. We didn't even get to that. All right? I, I mean, the list is going on and on and on. All right, Joplin, and, uh, Missouri. We know about that. Wild, wild west shit going on. Um, Mississippi flooded, Seneca Village. All these different things that have happened over the over the years. It, right. It's right. Yeah, it's it's happened multiple multiple times to to black people, which which impacted us being able to build generational long term wealth. Considering that black people started at less than zero, right? Less than one percent. Uh, or less than 2% of the nation's wealth at 1865, right? That's including North and South, whether you were enslaved or not. Now we talk about times when black people started to build wealth about this country. And you're right, Joe, because the only time, the only ones I just re read off were the ones that were destroyed by race mobs. And we're not talking about the changes of infrastructure, how black townships were, um, the black people were evicted so you can build Central Park. Red, well, they yeah, red line, but so, you know, um, and then we talk about gerrymandering policies that are put in place to make sure that um, certain districts don't have the ability to vote for their best interest. All right? right. And you circumvent their power. And you circumvent their votes and so forth. Um, we have all these different things that take that took place. Meanwhile, and, and remember remember now, the, the grandfather remember clauses. We did the show on the stolen farmland and I think it was over like $329 million stolen in the farmland now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, on top of that, black folk had to earn their freedom. Married to the 17, was it the 1717 law? I think it was 1770, the 1717 uh, policy of meritorious million mission, somewhere around there. Um, it, um, forgive me if I get the date wrong, but where black folk actually invented shit and, and, and used it as possible to negotiate their freedom as white, white folk got wealthy off of it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, I'm just getting I told you, man. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the separation of the black houses. Because he he talked about um the great society um policies that were put in place supposedly affirmative action. That was supposedly affirmative action. Um how did white women get roped into being minorities at that right. particular time? Right? Well, how, how, how did she have was white women? Right. Yeah, and, and and now, you know, minorities are everybody who's not a straight white male. Right, so even white men are now identified as minorities, and so they don't even have to be gay; they just have to say they're gay, 
and they can and they can fall in line with that. Um, so this, everything you looked at was an attempt to circumvent any gain that black people would get to sort of the, that's the actual part of reparations, right? You are supposed to repair a wrong, repair a damage. When America bombed uh, Japan, they had to rebuild Japan. The reparations package for rebuilding Japan and paying the Japanese members who, were, who became Americans here and were placed in internment camps for, you know, less than four years. Right. I'm not taking anything away from that. They also got paid. They just recently got million dollar payouts a few years ago. So and it's funny, right, because there's another part of that clip where he talked about uh, Asian Americans being the model citizens and this that, and the other. And the funny part about that is if you go to China, China's been having the biggest revolts since 2000, since before 2020. The young people in China have been turning up. All right. They over there and everything. If you talk about Korea, well, what part of Korea, north or south? Because in North Korea, if you don't have a picture of the prime minister, um, who was basically the emperor, <laughs> if you don't have a picture of him hanging in your living room, it's punishable by death. All right. So we talk about all these different things. And you leave out one thing. Not one of these groups were policies and laws put in place to disrupt their ability to 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 um, coagulate what? To, to disrupt there. They all come with a, a culture in place. You know, we we don't have that benefit. Every time you looked, black families were torn down, torn apart. You had slave making plantations on Barbados where they actually taught and trained how to disrupt the black family. You had black children taken from their families the second they were born, put on auction blocks. You had black men removed from the households because they were found that if black men stayed in, in, on the plantation, that the children that came up under him would be more likely to be rebellious. You know, then you put situations in place where you create laws and policies and welfare, the great society plan, the no man in the house rule. White folk didn't have to do that. White men got welfare benefits. You got the, v the GI bills that were put in place to give them millions of acres, gave them access to land grant colleges. Dr. King talked about this in one of the speeches right before he died. So, you know, we have all this shit. And then on top of it, you had operation government programs that were put in place since the 20s to disrupt an effective leadership in the black communities. Let's not forget the origins of the FBI prior to the FBI was put in place to stop Marcus Garvey's movement. 